Madam Clerk, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Present. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner Gonzalez? Absent. Commissioner McKibben? Present. Commissioner Scrivener? Absent. Commissioner Zaragoza? Present. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, can you please stand and Commissioner Fowler will be leading us. Stand, salute, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. Thank you, Commissioner Fowler. Moving on to <clears throat> item number three, video conference emergency request. Uh, clerk, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any commissioners attending by video conference? No. Okay, thank you. Moving on to item four, approval of the minutes of December 6, 2023. Do we have any public comment? I'm seeing none. Closing public comment. Do we have any commission uh, commissioner questions or comments? I see none. Call I for move approval, Fowler. Second, McKibben. I have a motion by, uh, a first motion by Fowler, second by McKibben. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passed. Okay. I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Commissioner F uh, Philip Peters is, is uh, attending and also Commissioner Andre Gonzalez for the record. Excellent. Okay. Moving on to public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons that desiring to address the commission on any on any matter not on this agenda and over the commission the commission has jurisdiction speakers are limited to two minutes please state your name and address for the record before making presentation clerk do we have anybody for public comment no okay closing pu public comment Mo uh, determination proceedings we have none uh, notice of public hearing 1824 city of Bakersfield uh, annexation 721 this proposal is the uh, annex 63 parcels of approximately 40.75 acres of land generally located west west and south of highway 58 and highway 99 interchange this annexation was initiated by the city for purposes of cleanup boundaries after as part of the completion of the centennial project Sika. notice of exception executive officer report mr blair Yes. Recently, the Centennial Quarter linking Highway 58 to the West Side Parkway was open to the public, and I drove it for the first time on the way here. It was pretty cool. It looked like a whole different city. As with any large project, there's always some cleanup. This annexation of 63 parcels in four areas along the Centennial Quarter is part of that cleanup. Of the 63 parcels, all but 10 are owned by the city of Bakersfield. Uh, this project, the pre-zoning is consistent and compatible with existing county zoning. It's consistent with a general plan, regional transport, trans transportation plan, or specific plan. There's clearly no ag conversion. The city of Bakersfield does not identify any disadvantaged unincorporated communities adjacent to the proposed annex annexation area. We show Bell ter Terrace on both sides of uh, 99 to be a disadvantaged un uh, unincorporated community. Uh, as this does not affect housing in the area, it really is not a major issue for us to address on this particular annexation. Uh, this is consistent with commission policies. Uh, uh, the parcels do not conform with the assessor parcels, but does conform with the tax rate area boundaries. So the tax rate boundaries are, are, are in good shape. Uh, there is a fire agreement between the city of Bakersfield and the county that applies here, so there will be uh, 
opportunity for the county to um, respond to um, incidences in this area because of that, that agreement. So there's an overlap there. Um, there's no additional water supply required and no tax increase. A notice of exemption was adopted by the applicant, the city of Bakersfield, and the city of Bakersfield has provided an indemnification agreement. There are several errors in the application. The acreage is approximately 40.75 acres, not 40 acres. In the plan for providing services, it states the county currently provides street, light, street sweeping and sewer in the area. Uh, the county does not provide those. There is not a CSA that overlaps in that area. Uh, so th those uh, services do not exist. Uh, the plan for providing service also states that the annexations were approved. The city would take over law enforcement in the area from the county and highway patrol. Uh, the app, the, the kind of missed the point. This is a freeway. Uh, the CHP is not going to see control of Highway 58 to the city of Bakersfield. So they will continue to provide service in the area. Uh, effective and affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. This annexation to the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The protest hearing can be waived in accordance with government code section 5663. This code section requires a LAFCO commission to approve an annexation without protest hearing if the application meets several requirements including individual notices, a hearing at which we're at now, and receiving no written opposition from voters or landowners. In review of the application, all requirements have been met unless someone provides opposition before this hearing is finished tonight. With the city owning 53, per, 53 of the 63 parcels, the protest, protest hearing are a foregone uh, results would be a foregone conclusion. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is my recommendation that the commission approve the annexation number 1824, centennial number one into the city of Bakersfield, waive protest hearing with conditions recommended by the executive officer. Okay, thank you Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding annexation 720, 721? I'm seeing none. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions regarding this annexation? I'm seeing none. Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Ms. Father. I'm sorry. Hi. Um, Commissioner Zaragoza has a question on the. That was a nice map you have there, but I was hoping you'd keep it up there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, Kern County, uh, the annexed area has obviously county zoning. And land uses is that going to be absorbed by the city or is the city going to rezone the annexed areas they have pre-zoned yeah. pre they have pre-zoned it already and that is consistent with current uh county zoning okay. in the area uh since they own since the city owns the majority of the property it's a good issue as far as they're they're happy with that um and this is a rookie question I think I know the answer to it, but is the Centennial One, number one, uh, infrastructure maintained by the state, or does the city have any maintenance arrangement? This isn't within my jurisdiction, uh, but yeah, once it's turned over and named as Highway 58, it's mm -hmm. now a state highway, so it is turned over to the state. I'm looking staff maybe they know the answer to that sure if you want to <laughs> provide additional clarification there good evening uh, my name is Yazid Alagheri I'm the assistant planner with the city of Bakersfield uh, in regards to that uh, we were actually approached by Caltrans to do the annexation uh, that way if there's any maintenance that is needed outside in the borders they don't have to figure out is it city is it county and that was the main purpose really for this uh, annexation so the highway is uh, maintained by the state. However, occasionally they may need to go outside of the perimeters to do any maintenance either to the sides or under it. And so in that case, they will be working with the city's public works department. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Saragosa. Uh, uh, go ahead, Commissioner Fowler. 
Yes, I spoke to Bud earlier about this, but I wondered if anyone else had wondered. Uh, and there are several places in our packet where uh, this area is said uh, to be uninhabited and then later inhabited and then later uninhabited. <laughs> and I wonder if you could explain why that's there. Can we grab that one? Yeah. Yeah, on the original application, the, uh, the applicant had placed that it was uninhabited. But as we began checking with the elections and with the residential, the landowners and all, we found that it did meet the threshold as being inhabited, which is over 12 registered voters. It reached that threshold by just one or two. Uh, now, them 12 registered voters uh, are located underneath the underpass in the right under on Stockdale Highway. So it's commercial development so they might be registered voters in a commercial area or there may be some housing behind that commercial area or okay and then if I could continue mr. chair um, sometimes when we get a packet on annexations we see an example of what was sent to the landowners and the, our packet doesn't have that and or at least I couldn't find it uh, I, I would like to have that for annexations in the future. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I could include that, yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Couch. Who's the second? Uh, second by Commissioner Crump. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item number eight, commission, uh, commission items, policy and budget committee assignments. Mr. Knox? The chair and exec ex executive officer have met and determined the policy budget, policy and budget committee assignments. For the policy committee, uh, commissioners Couch, McKibben, Gonzalez, and Zaragoza will serve. And under the budget committee, commissioners Scrivener, Crump, Ione, and Fowler. Committees can only have four commissioners on each, with five or more being a quorum of the commission. Typically, we have two committees and nine commissioners. One is not included but the resignation of uh, Commissioner Sanders means that there are seats for all sitting commissioners. To make up each committee in an attempt to have one supervisor, one city, and one special district, and one public member on each committee, but with one less uh, sp special district, there'll be two city council members on the budget committee. Please disregard any sentence indicating that Commissioner Crump will be on an alternative for both co uh, committees. That was mistakenly left as I modified last year's memo and thought for sure that I had removed that, re removed that line. So my apologies. Uh, there, are no th there is no recommendation and no vote required as these appointments are at the pleasure of the chair. And with that, I turn back to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public, re uh, public comment regarding item number eight uh, for the com uh, committee assignments? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions regarding this item? Need a motion to approve it? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. We don't, we don't need a vote. Oh, then you don't need a motion. We don't need a motion. It's at your, it's at your pleasure. It's okay. the pleasure of the chair. Okay, thank you. Yep. So moving on to item B, contract with Lieber Cassidy Whitmore Law Firm. Mr. Knox. Mr. Shutter recommended that the commission hire outside counsel to review employment contracts. As this contract is, in, as the contract in question is mine, it's best to turn this over to Mr. Schroeder to address this item. Yeah, at your last meeting, um, we uh, amended the executive officer's uh, contract to raise his salary, but he also had other re requests. And so what I recommended was, because that is not an area of expertise that I have in uh, employment law, public employment law, that we appoint um, I'm recommending Liebert, Cassidy, and Whitmore from Fresno. Uh, we've got a copy of their uh, proposed contract in your, in your packet. 
uh, and then they will then, if you approve their uh, retainer, then uh, retention, then they will um, draft the contract that Mr. Knox was requesting and that you modified in your uh, points that you wanted in it, uh, and then bring that back to, uh, to you at your next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. Do we have any uh, public comment regarding this item? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions? I do. Uh, is that going to be brought to us for review on the draft or review and approval? I'm just going to bring you the agreement that he drafts okay. with your com with the the changes that you wanted um, uh, in in. It, it, Mr. Knox asked for certain provisions. You made changes to those at, the, at that meeting on December the 6th, and uh, those have been communicated to um, Liebert Cassidy, and they will include those in the agreement. And it, it'll be brought to you to, to look at. If you don't want to approve it or you have changes in it, we'll bring it back again. Well, okay, so I'm a little bit confused. Is this closed session or open? Uh, no, it's there. we're not talking about salary now. We're just talking about terms. So it, oh, that's an open discussion. It would be open unless unless you want to uh, evaluate Mr. Knox further, in, what, in which case it would be in closed session. But I don't anticipate that. You've already evaluated him. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, Fowler. So that was my question, whether there will be any closed session or not. So it's been answered. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion? Motion, Fowler. Second. Sorry. Motion by Fowler, second by Commissioner Couch. Do I have a vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item C, Special District Commission elections. Mr. Knox? As I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, Commissioner Sanders has resigned her seat on the commission. She has taken a position on Supervisor Scribner's staff, uh, which means she is conflicted out from being both working for Zach and being on this commission at the same time. Uh, there are just over two years left on uh, Commissioner Sanders' term. In addition, Commissioner McKibben's seat is up in May. With that in mind, there was a decision to combine the two elections. Nominations were sent out to all eligible independent special districts. Two nominations were received by the deadline, Gary McKibben and Les Clark III. That is Les Clark III, General Manager of Westside Park and Recreation District, not Les Clark II, Mayday Mayday. <laughs> <laughs> CKH allows when there is also not a contested race that the nominees be seated without an election. So it's my recommendation to accept the nominations of Gary McKibben to be seated for the four-year term ending in 2028, and Les Clark III, who will fill the remainder of Karen Sanders' seat with a term ending in 2026. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding this item? Seeing none, do we have, a, do we have any commissioner questions or concerns? Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Uh, Commissioner Couch, second by Mr. Crump. All in favor? Peters. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Peters. The, uh, the second was by uh, Commissioner Peters. I just got the echo, so I'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay, moving on to number nine, general business approval of monthly expense list number 23-11. Uh, commission qu uh, comments or questions? Move approval. Okay. Second. We have, approval, uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch, second by uh, Commissioner Peters. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, moving on to approval of monthly ex uh, expense number 23 dash. Uh, any commissioner questions or, or comments? Seeing none, call for a motion. Motion. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Couch, second by 
Peters, uh, Commissioner Peters, uh, do we have a motion? I mean, I'm sorry, do we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Went on to see approval of monthly expense number 24-01. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions? Motion by Mr. Andre Gonzalez, second by Mr. Uh, David Couch. Do I have a, uh, do, I have, do we have a, a, a all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm trying to, because I changed it from the city, so it's different. <laughs> we'll get the hang of this. It was taking a longer uh, time, but I guess we have time on our hands. Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. I'm not going to change it again, so. Okay, moving on to D, employee handbook re uh, revisions. Mr. Knox. Yes, um, we have an employee handbook that spells out um, the rules and regulations for uh, employees. Um, every two or three years, we give that to a um, HR firm, which um, changes that depending on the, the changes in current law. Uh, there's one specific area where most of the changes are pretty typical. Uh, most of the changes actually were gender related. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, the, one, the one that is a bigger issue though is um, sick time. Um, the state of California up to the minimum level of sick time and so we have modified the table for sick time to reflect state law and to have the same Oops, sorry. Same bump ups. Uh, the first tier is zero to five years. Second tier is five to ten. Third tier is ten and over. Um, the first two tiers are exactly the same as the counties. The third tier, the county does not have a third tier, uh, but we had one that we've had for a while, so I just bumped that up like we did the other two. Um, because that, that is a change in how we handle. Um, sick time that's a that's a policy change that the c commission has to make i don't get to make that for obvious reasons um, so that is my recommendation to approve um, the employee handbook with changes presented thank you mr knox do we have any public comment regarding the employee handbook seeing none do we have any commissioner comments or questions go ahead miss fowler um I noticed on page 2.6 that there was a little minor error where um, it was listed under additional information to contact the DFEH, uh, Department of Fair Employment and Housing, rather than the Civil Rights Department, California Civil Rights Department. So they just need to make that little adjustment, removing those initials and putting in the right one. Uh, the email uh, contact information is correct. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. Anyone, uh, any other commission questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, do it. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Sergo. Last but not least, is, is the uh, final handbook going to be done? Is it this quarter, or is it that's the, that's the intent to be everything finalized? If you approve it here, it's it's complete. Okay. And I have a rookie question: Is it eventually then a um, item that could be put on the website? I will have to research that. Okay, thank you. You can let me know. Because that's something that's sort of been the good, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. Motion to approve. Motion. Sorry. Fowler. Second, uh, Commissioner Peters. Uh, I made a motion. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'll second you then. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, no problem. Do I, uh, can we take a vote all in favor? All right. Uh, we, we need a roll call. Oh, let's do a roll call then. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items, Mr. Knox. 
Yes, starting at the May meeting, and I will be confirming it's May for Commissioner C Crump, uh, Maricopa's time on the commission will be coming to an end. The city selection committee picks the next commissioner. Tradition has a process being alphabetical, which means Ridge Ridgecrest would be next in line. I have reached out to both Kathy Krause, who runs the city selection committee, and Ron Strand, who is Ridgecrest city manager, to get the ball rolling. I've also talked to McFarland city manager and our new chair about the, an additional McFarland council member joining as our alternate. At the last meeting, Commissioner Fowler brought up the idea of doing a LAFCO 101 uh, for commissioners. It appears that the appropriate time to bring that forward would be the May meeting as we will have as many as two new commissioners and possibly two new alternates. Um, so that, let's do it when we have the new newbies here. Um, that's, that's the idea. Uh, next month, we will also bring forth the draft 2024-25 uh, budget. Uh, also want to remind you, if you haven't already, to turn in your Form 700s and ethics certificates. If you don't know if you've turned them in, please see Ms. Menchaca after the, me after the meeting. She'll, she'll make sure you're, you're where you need to be. Uh, a question was raised at the last meeting about LAFCO having our own website. Um, we will be releasing an RFP a request for proposal to several website administrators this month and hope to bring this before the commission very soon. I would like to finish uh, this, the open session portion of the meeting by recognizing the passing of Cheryl Lee Wegman on Christmas Day of 2023. Ms. Wegman was a longtime Wasco City Council member and served on LAFCO from 2014 to 2016. On that, I, my report has concluded. Thank you, Mr. Knox. There's no vote taken. It was only informational. So moving yes. on to the closed session. <clears throat> so for closed session. Um, so this this uh, ends our regular meeting, correct? Moving on to closed yes. session. Yes. Thank so you. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Fowler. Um, Mr. Knox, I just wondered, will we acknowledge Karen Sanders in any way? Does she get a certificate or? A handshake I, or I, anything? I asked her about a plaque and she said, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So she doesn't have a plan of coming back to the commission. I mean, we could ask her if, she, if you'd like to. <laughs> well, we thank her, I know. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Fowler. Went on to, uh, I don't know, 10 closed session. This is only a room available to hold closed session with the, com the commissioner outlined. At this time, we ask everyone who is not in the commission to exit the room. For those online, we can we can place you in the virtual waiting room until closed session is finished. If anyone has called in, there's an opportunity to place you on hold. We will have an, we all have to say goodbye for now. We will reopen the room and bring anyone back from the virtual waiting room after the closed session is complete and announce any result any results as required. Thank you.